I was like, Damn, man. Budweiser yeah, Canada, one of our sponsors. Quick plug. Well, folks, you know I suck at introductions, but uh, this man luckily doesn't really need much of one. He's been a reoccurring guest, probably one of the funniest guys we've had on. Uh, Teddy with his Bers- dog. With his dog. Today. Oh yeah, yeah. Shout out to his puppy Eddie Vetter or Vetter. Sorry. There's one name. He's like Madonna, but Vetter. You have to hold your mic up here. You should have seen Bugsy. Literally. Yeah, so obviously we're doing these a little bit differently. You're not on your phone calling in, so you have to keep the mic up to your mouth. Bugsy had a very difficult time doing that. As Bugsy was, got outsmarted by the mic again. He's he's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. <laughs> but uh, welcome to the podcast, Teddy. And <laughs> Welcome back to the podcast, Teddy. Thanks, welcome boys. back. So we're out here in L.A. We're in Venice. You are in Manhattan Beach. Teddy brought us over to a little... Members only club he's at yesterday. Talk about living, dude. This place, you can see the water, little bar, great food. Like, you're living here. Yeah, this is life. <laughs> I got lucky. I outsmarted the league for too long. <laughs> and now I'm on the left coast. And you also said to me yesterday, like, I thought it was cool when I went to play in Florida and Tampa, but no, then I realized, like, LA is where you want to be, Manhattan Beach. Yeah, like, I didn't realize I came from Newfoundland, obviously. What was in Saskatchewan, Maine, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you never I, played anywhere. I couldn't have picked the worst places to play. And then I came out here. I was like, oh, wow, the NHL is the best. And then <laughs> I was like, oh, I, but I couldn't afford to buy a place. <laughs> then I got traded around. I'm like, oh, Florida's close to home. Florida's nice. And then I came back out here at the end of my career. Oh. Like Looking back, like I probably shouldn't have signed here because I might have a chance to still be playing right now. But because I'm living here now, I'm happy. So it's like it worked out. Timing is everything, and uh, you you bought a spot here. I did. I bought a spot. Uh, that's why I went to Russia actually, because Boston. I was didn't want to take a two way, and then uh, just wanted cash, huh? Just wanted a bunch of cash. Yeah, for the... I just wanted to buy off my house, so I oh. went to Russia. So four months felt it was worth the four years. Okay, because you hear horror stories about guys not getting paid their full amount of money. You of course did, and uh, you. I remember you said you left your gear there. Yeah, like the boys like have this like rec hockey at the at the rink every Friday, and it's a good bunch of guys, like old like Surrey who was just on. He skates like Derek Armstrong, Stoli, Heatley, like, right? I, yeah, Heater, <laughs> who's my favorite. I think like Jerry Brockheimer skates. He can't he can't play, but he scores like nine goals a game. I think like here you go. He's he's like the the he's North like, American Putin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where like Jerry Bruckheimer, of course, he's like one of the co owners <laughs> yeah. of the Seattle. Uh, what do, what do they we call them? The Seattle Kraken. I hope they end up being the Kraken or Kraken. But I guess that they're, everyone's leaning towards the Sock guys. Okay, so Seattle, I don't mind Sock guys. So Jerry Bruckheimer, of course, one of the I, I would say he's one of the majority owners of it. I think so. Yeah, he owns like all this movie stuff out here and all, he, all that stuff. He he loves hockey. He throws those Jerry Bruckheimer hockey tournaments. I don't know if they're still going. I went to two years of them. These place it, it's a like basically you got to sign a non disclosure. It's a gong show. Uh, we won't get too much into detail. But he would play in him too, and he's like not very good. Like, but he's but he's when you're that rich or powerful, you're like I can play. With I the wouldn't best go near him with a ten foot. Suck. Exactly. I wouldn't go near him because it's just like the the respect of like the aura. Of this, yeah, he's what this an older guy's... guy too. You don't want to yeah. like take the puck from him. Hey, no, you, you haven't gone once. I don't have any gear, so I got to text like the Kings trainer to get some gear. But I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Imagine if we had to like buy sticks now. Like I know. synergies are three hundred dollars, I think. Even like tape. That, I just made up that number. I, I know. It's pretty high though. But like skates, tape. Imagine tape. Imagine how much of an idiot you'd feel like if you had to go buy tape. Oh my god! Like if I'm going in, and, like we're paying to get your skates sharpened yeah, now. I know. I haven't got my. Out of the we were area. spoiled, like, boys. I know. It's, it I don't weird. think I'd get them sharpened again. And I, I loved all the trainers. I wasn't like a high maintenance guy, but you just like take the, that stuff for granted. Didn't you just chuck on new wheels and play in them that night? Yeah, every time. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't even heat never him. cared about. No, that I didn't even heat them up. <laughs> I, I'll say this. That's so why Teddy, I couldn't skate. But th- this may na- may not be you. I have no desire to play hockey anymore. I'd rather spend that two hours or maybe two and a half. It would have took me to drive there, put on my gear, get out there, and I and I love the boys too. But I get to do this, so I get the the right. guy interaction. I'd I'd rather go to like yoga and go somewhere where it's gonna like get some mental clarity for me as opposed to like. You know, going there, you know, you're gonna have beers after. Yeah, I, I, I show up and there's like ten minutes left. Teddy and, goes in the hands beers. of the boys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I still think that if we're looking at post like playing career, some guys just still want to play. Oh, Scotty, oh, oh, this guy oh, here. Vetter, Vetter's, Vetter's going, going nuts. Vetter, Vetter, Vetter loves him. He does. Up dog, what's up, buddy? Uh, we're doing so great. Scotty, we're doing up, great. just showed up mid interview. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna continue. 
and, and hopefully Vetter shuts the fuck up because if he doesn't, <laughs> I'm going to put a dart in his neck. He, up, he, he likes Uppy. Uppy's a big music fan. He likes Vetter. Is that so? He's after Eddie Vetter. Smells good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's Scotty Upshaw complimenting us on the scent of our uh, our Venice house. Uh, yeah, I Vetter. Smells I like. Uh, so Pearl Jam's my favorite band. Oh really? And uh, when I got a dog, I was like, I just want. I it was like so super fan of me. But I was playing in Florida at the time, and uh, Sean Thornton. Big Chicklets fan. Um, he, uh, he he like played in St. John's where I grew up. He was in the AHL and uh, played for the Maple Leafs. And he was like my favorite player. He scored like once every year. So he played there for like four years. He had four goals, I think. But he had like the best celebrations ever. And they, they used to call him the Bulldog. He used to beat the shit out of everyone. And then he would like score and have these awesome celebrations. So I like loved him. And then like my first time playing, I think he was in Boston at the time. First time playing him, I lined up against him, and I was like, this is, like, my favorite player. And I was like, hey, but he might, like, beat the shit out of me. And he, was, he like, talked new for me. He's like, what's up, bud? And I'm like, yes. And then I got traded to Florida, and um, he, he was like, uh, I was, you know, when you get traded to a new team, you don't know where you're sitting. Like, you don't know where to go. Yeah, you, just yeah, you don't yeah. want to impose it. Exactly. You ask. I was like, I didn't talk until I was spoken to him. I was in the league for a long time, and but I still, I wasn't talking, and Authority's like, sit next to me, bud. Hauled out a big bottle of booze. I'm like, okay, we're going to get along good. And so then we go to a, uh, Eddie Vedder, Pearl Jam, we're playing at uh, against Florida. or Sorry, at the Florida rink. So we went the night before a game, and Thority was like, I think like the manager knows me. I think we're going to go down and say hi to Eddie Vedder after. I was like, this is the coolest. <laughs> oh, Vedder, oh, Vedder. Yeah, there he is. Um, so you're flipping out. You're like, I'm going to meet him. I'm going to meet yeah, him. Yeah, we're going to meet I already met him actually with Bugsy like years before and like Chris Chelios during the lockout. And but I was like, no way he'll remember. We're gonna get down after, so we we go down. He's like, do you want a beer? I'm like, yep. He I don't I don't like smoking cigarettes. Like I cough every time. He's like, do you want to smoke? I'm like, yep. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, give me a few. Yeah. So I'm having like American spirits. I'm like, <coughs> <laughs> but I'm like, I don't care. It's the coolest thing ever. So, and then I didn't have my teeth at the time. And so this is like now we're like eight beers in. We got a game the next day. It's like two in the morning. And uh, he's like. Can I, can I ask you a really weird question? I'm like, yeah, no problem. I'm like, what? I didn't have my teeth. He's like, can I put a cigarette in your tooth hole? I'm like, you can put your wiener in there if you wanted to, but like, sure, man. But I was like, can I ask you a weird question? And I was like, he's like, yeah. I was like, Thority, can you take a picture of him doing that to me? And we have it. I'm like giggling. No. Like, yeah, he's got like the cigarette in my, my tooth hole. And I'm like trying not to cough. You've gotten some pretty good celebrity encounters. I know. Had, uh, who's the other one? Uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Larry you David. You met Larry David? Oh, Larry David. He was at a wedding with him the yeah. whole day at his table. I imagine he's just funny, like, talking about what he ordered for food. Like, is he just... He, he acts like he's on an episode, like, every, all day. He's always on. He's, like, the funniest guy. Then we're at... So, like, the bride and groom... It was Jared Stoll's wedding, and him and Aaron were, like, coming down the aisle, and he was, like... Had his jacket like over his head like this. He's like, he looked behind me and Brad Rich. He's like, don't he complain? He's like, I can't wear my fucking baseball hat here. I'm like, my my bald head's getting a suntan. And then, so he had his jacket on. All of a sudden, like he comes to, like take it back down over his head. He had the tag hanging on his jacket. He forgot to take the tag off his jacket. And he like it's worth like five hundred million. Yeah, I looked around and we we're like, oh, we're, he's we're, probably gonna return it. Yeah, that's what that's what me and Richard like. You bring that back, like you bring that back to H and M when you're done. Oh, okay. So, how does Larry David get when you start chirping him? He, he loved love it. it. He loved it. Okay. Awesome. And he was like, he was like, cheers us like really like loud. So, we were calling him like Clinky D the whole time. We we're <laughs> like, Clinky, Clinky D. D. And then he like, so he, he got, he's an older guy and he got, he got banged up like the night before the wedding. And there was like these windows that are like floor to ceiling height. And, and it was like, it's clear, it's glass. Like, he, d he didn't even realize what he was doing. He got up, like, to go take a piss or, like, leave, walked right into it. <laughs> right into the oh glass. Oh, God. Yeah, we were dying. Oh, so this guy is just, yeah. it's, yeah, the curb your enthusiasm is his life. Yeah. And every time, like, he would, one of the episodes, I think, he, like, he would skip lines in the in the buffet line. So someone was like, can I take a picture? He's like, well, I got to take your spot, though. <laughs> so he's, like, trying to, just, like, skip the line. He's like, that's an episode. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Always on. <laughs> Um, uh, we, we got to talk about some more OT. So you're working basically full time for Adam Oates now. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we, t we haven't talked to you since we talked to OT, which was awesome. I mean, that was, or maybe we did, but either way he was talking. We talked about he was him an about the, uh, he was the, an hall fame, the hall of fame oh, yeah, induction yeah, yeah. ceremony. So we yeah. didn't get into the Adam Oates talk at all, which by the way, people were going nuts at that, that hall of fame episode. Just your kind of reenactment of how the night went. That's the type of insider we need. Uh, on yeah, Teddy's our insider. <laughs> He's our insider. Hey, like Bob McKenzie of Chiglets. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, no, no, I don't know if you heard. Ra, uh, uh, he he broke the the Rick Nash retiring story. Oh, really? Yeah, he's a hardcore oh. journalist, so he's basically the American Bob McKenzie. So don't you dare take that. Try and take. Sorry, that I'm sorry. I, I wanted to break the Marty St. Louis coaching thing yesterday, but I didn't want to. No, you broke it to us though. We yeah, knew. Yeah, he told yeah. me yesterday. He's like, Marty, tomorrow is going to be named the Columbus Blue Jackets power play special. You know, you see, but and that's what I love that you didn't. Obviously, you'd be throwing him underneath the bus by by saying that. But like we don't like we don't care to be that that breaking. Yeah, no. I mean, I was I like, I was like, oh, that'll be, out, that'll be out tomorrow. We'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah, I kind of react to things, not really break. Like news. if you got if, if like like six flames guys got kills on rookie party, that's the type of stories I want to break. <laughs> You know, <laughs> not saying that it, I use the flames as an example. I don't want, I don't want any of them. just the first team that came to your head. Yes. Because they, you know, they like to have a good time and they're fucking on a heater this year. And, and you know, that's just the reality of the situation. Cause you know, partying has to me, no correlation to losing. And, uh, I don't know if you wanted to get into it. I know we talked about it a little bit last night. We were at the bar. You had some very s- strong words, uh, regarding the Ferent situation. Yeah. I mean, I, Listen, he I I got to Edmonton. He was the captain. I just didn't think he had to throw like the guys, especially it's, he's basically directing at the young guys there. And I was in Tampa with Bugsy. We had Marty, Vinny, Stammer, Headman. Like we the year Boston won, like we were five minutes away from going to the finals. Like yeah, that's the one nothing game. Yeah, one nothing. Yeah. It was a great game. And like hats off to Boston. They they won. But like we went out and we picked our spots though. Like if it was a day off and we had we're a night on the road like marty's there vinny's there this Matias is going on for 50 years you go out everyone night. goes out and then you, you next day you go to the spa or you drink fucking 10 waters and then you go to work the next day and sweat it out like yeah, that's what we do play the next night exactly and in edmonton i got there and for one it's it was hard then like the team sucked like i, I like i couldn't even go to the grocery store like people would make fun of me oh yeah and like i was a pigeon on the team <laughs> So, like, imagine if you're Halsey, you're like, you were there, you yeah. know, like, Ebbs and those guys. It's, like, hard for them to go out. So, they would always play video games. Like, we'd, we'd have, like, dinner parties, and we'd have drinks, and then they'd, they'd go play video games. So, when, like, when Ferentz said that, I was like, come on, man. Like, for one, I, I got there, too. He shows up to the bike test, and he had his own, like, bike shoes and his own bike pedals. I'm like, okay, that's, and he did, like, does triathlons or marathons with the head coach of the team. Yeah. Like, how, how, many, how many times have you ever seen that? Well, I just we said that time that you could be a great you could be a great team that goes out and parties and still win a lot of games. I mean, it's they were bad because the you guys were bad because the Oilers were bad. I yeah. was there. Yeah, we could. And I use this. You were you were a guy that I said at the time. Sorry, Biz. I said at awesome. the time that him saying that is kind of ripping on like anyone there. Like if you look at the roster, like oh that guy maybe he was partying too much, and you're a guy that's like I didn't do anything. We were sitting around playing. Well, video it's also games. different. It's also different if you're the guy pulling the rope and you, let's say you have a Halsey type season like we like you had last year with New Jersey and then you're the one bitching about the, the, the issue with the culture I'm okay with that then I'm like well if this guy was 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 putting in the time and work and and, and leading this team like like and I respect the career that Ferris has I had. do too he and I, I like career, it. I like him great guy great yeah. person great work ethic it's yeah it's just like I mean he wasn't I mean, he wasn't that impactful, was he? Was he like a number four defenseman at the time? I think when Boston won, he was like five or six, right? Yeah, I think, yeah. With him and Caberlet. Solid. And like, was Wade Redden there too? No. No, and Redden I'm, was there And, and I'm not taking anything away from him, as I just said. Like, he he had a great career. Oh, no, for and he, sure. And he, and, he, and, and he was he was a gamer, man. Like, he was he fought when he had to. Like, he blocked shots. But he's not like a, a Chara or like a number one guy that he can... Part of the thing, too, is I think that people forget is is... Obviously, you're making a lot of money and things are cool. You're, you're, you're playing in the National Hockey League. It's your dream job. But it is very, very stressful. If you lose two, three in a row, you're starting to feel it. You have a little bit of anxiety building yeah. up in your body. When, when, I, when we used to go for beers, half of the time I was doing it to be like, oh, like it just took me out of that reality for, for, for the three, four hours. And you got to blow off and some And you would steam. laugh so much with your team. I know. You laugh, that's a bad. You're laughing the whole time. Well, look look at you guys now. Like, we, well, me and Biz played together for a bit. Me and you didn't play together. And now, now, this is like why, this is why you play, like the friendships and stuff yeah. after. Well, well and, and guys that I was playing with, I probably knew that like his, his daughter was going through something or his, his family member was going through that. Whereas like, I'm not saying you don't learn those types of things by going to the rank and like being on a, a strict regimen, but to know each other. you learn a lot of shit about when you're having beers with your teammates that you might not know. And all of a sudden you, you know, 
I'm I'm gonna block that shot not because it might give me a few extra bucks, but because I know it's really gonna make that fucking guy I respect sitting on the bench happy. For sure. And it, and that is it, like those small little things add up. And I mean, we some people may be like, yeah, you're just justifying it. No, that's that's how I genuinely felt about that type of situation. Yeah, and then even like when you get traded, like you're still in the NHL, you're still making a ton of cash. You're probably going to another place with just as good guys, but you're hurt because like you have all those friendships. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm still going to play 15 minutes or 17 minutes, whatever. Maybe I'll play more. But you're, you're going to be like, you're, you're not with those guys that you talked about. And you, you develop meet all new guys. I know. Like, and you're so awkward. Yeah, at the beginning. You're but like, I, I'll give you a prime example. So I was playing in Phoenix. I, our teams were awesome. I had Yans, Donor, yeah. a coin, like Derek Morris. Like we had all these cool personalities. It, it was a little bit of an old school mentality still. And then my time was up playing in the NHL, and I was waiting to get find a job. Finally, like a month into the season, I got I signed with Phoenix, and I went down to their AHL team on a PTO. And like, not to take anything away from those guys in that locker room, I just didn't fit in, and I felt it, and, yeah. and, it, and it was uncomfortable for me. And you're talking about like like I missed all those friendships that I had. Like I I was almost depressed. Because I didn't get to go and to the rink. And they're still together playing. You're like, fuck. But I wasn't even playing in Phoenix. I didn't give a shit because I got to go to the rink and have fun every day. Because <laughs> those were my it's friends. Shower with Keith. I, know. I got to fucking shave my dick with a one bick razor because of Keith Yandel and, and fucking I saw know. half my cock off. Maybe I should have got the tip of it for once. Uh, but but on a, but it was. But luckily, then I, I got released and then I was picked up by Manchester. And then, boom, it was right back. Like I was back with right friends in. again. I fell right in. Like Sean Backman, you know Sean yeah. Backman, Vinny Laverde, like Andrew Botterchuk, all these different guys. Like I'm, I'm Forbes, yeah. Derek Forbert, who uh, you played with. Like I'm friends with these guys for life. Like, yeah, do we talk every day? No, but. Yeah, when you see each other, it's right back to those days. Yeah, right? That's like Steve Eminger for me. We played together for just one year. And you know what? He lives in Boston. It sucks. We haven't seen each other. He's got two kids now but i could see him we'll go to dinner i bet you in the near future and it'll be like we were together every day exactly it's quick you're just yeah it's just but, like you left practice but it's nice now when you do have that it's such a good relationship because it's exactly what it was like when you're playing together but now you're like dude what's up in life like because when you're playing together you know what guys every day is going through but now i haven't seen him in so long you catch up you're interested to hear from of guys that's why the golf trips are so good that we go on. Like, so, fun. And, and, and like we're basically wrapping up that Ferentz discussion. And it's just like, like I respect the way he did things because that's hard and he stayed disciplined and handled his business the way he did. But my mind and body needed those nights with the boys. Well, and, yeah. and if I didn't have that, I would have went fucking crazy. Yeah, it's good to get away. You need to get away from it. And that was our way. So I wouldn't... I, I wouldn't criticize his way of doing things, but I expect my way to be not criticized of doing things. Yeah, for sure. Everyone's different. And yeah, Ferentz had a family. His wife is awesome. His two little girls, they were like into everything. Uh, like they're athletic and, and like they were always around. But like to go out and, and make fun of those young guys like that and just to basically call everyone out about himself, I was like, you don't have to do that. Like, it's so easy just to be quiet. It kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, yeah. You just said it's so easy. Bill, Bill Guerin used to say, I was told that Bill Guerin used to say this, it's not that hard to be a good guy. It's it's hard. I know. It's not that hard to be a good guy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's not that hard to say, like, thank you or like so, yeah. hold the door for someone. Or just not throw a bunch of jabs at guys once you retire. Yeah. It's, like, not, yeah. It, it's pretty easy to not yeah, to like, know not to do yeah. that. And, I mean, he's got his cup and, like, he had a good career, made a bunch of cash. Like, just be quiet, man. Just sail in the sunset. Cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, speaking of sailing into the sunset, give me your day to day now. Like you were telling me yesterday a little bit, but well, let's talk about his Oats job. That's what I'm saying. I want to know, oh, like, okay. you know, wake up. I'm sure you talk to Oatsy almost every day. Like, yeah, we time talk you all wake time. up. Like, what's your what's your day to day now? Oatsy calls me like 15 times a day. He's like, got a new drill. Like, came up with something. I'm like, I know. Like, you're a magician. Like, just leave me alone. Can I sleep in? Like, he calls me. Like, I can wake up. It's like 4:57 text message. Like, the Eastern time or uh, West Coast time. I'm like, Oatsy, I was like. It was either a couple of things. I was like, just getting home, or I haven't like woken up yet because it's Monday. Um, and I had a Sunday fun. Day. Yeah, but no, he he's awesome. Like I I wish I had him before because I'd probably still be playing. But um, he I, he just I'm learning so much more. And at, at first I thought I was gonna be awkward to like go around to the guys because like some of the guys you played against. And I remember like, I'm better than you. Yeah, not even that. Yeah, it's just like like I, I remember we're going to Minnesota and I'm like, oh, see, like. He's like, yeah, go take Zach Prize and do this drill. I'm like, uh, he makes 11 million and he's a pretty good player. Yeah. And, he's, and he's still playing and he's older than me and I suck. 
So I'm like, but at the same time, like now looking back, it's I'm just another set of eyes for for him, right? Yeah. Like, cause I know like his language, his diction, what he's talking about, and I'm all like, hey Zach, do this, cause this is what I did. He's like, oh, you're you're not playing anymore. So I'm like, <laughs> he's like Teddy, you're done. Yeah. For reason. Yeah. You're in Russia. Yeah. Um, but OT just tells me, shows me what to do, and I do some of this stuff too, so I understand it. And then I'm just like, hey, this is like maybe try th- like how OT talked about, it, and then they'll do it and they'll get it. And it's like you go in the summers and then you you work in the mornings and then you go go out and do this go for dinners you like have wine with the boys and you travel around it's great okay so there's there's individual skill coaches in regards to like hey i want to make my hands better so you just kind of like stick handle around pucks and stuff like that or or the pylons and stuff but that's like instagram ot calls it like instagram hands it's hilarious so so (laughs) so what you're saying that he's like he's like a genius at is putting you in situations that you're going to find yourself in games and go over and over them again to where if you're being if you're seeing this you're doing this where basically you kind of become a bit of a robot yeah for sure in that situation some of the stuff is like is boring and it's not like some of the guys go out and they don't even wear like helmets or like their top gear because you're not like skating around you're just kind of it's like very cerebral stuff so if you're like a forward or d wit you played left d yep oh she's gonna throw 500 pucks in left corner left corner wheel the net or stop in reverse and get it every way one hand with your skate like how are you going to get it without getting hit how can you get get the puck and pick your head up like a half second quicker so you're not going to get smoked and so you can make a play so then they're like oh wit's like it's efficient so wit, wit looks faster so you look faster because you're getting the puck away quicker exactly and you're making decisions quicker and then and then but and hockey people are like oh wit must have did more squats this summer right like he's faster he's quick quick twitch or whatever but it's like only because he's processing it faster it, the puck is under control yep. faster yep. and now you can make a play if you think the game fast there's definitely a part of it where you don't have to be as fast exactly I mean, guys have made careers out of that okay well think about it this way is like the there's some guys who are like athletically gifted where right. they have no brain of nature yeah. and the minute their body starts deteriorating you're just like oh that person really fell off yeah whereas if you have the mind for it you're you're going to be able to last longer well, well they like change their game like, a little here's bit a, here's a, a yeah, prime but, example well, joe pavelski yeah joe joe pavelski is a great example it's like over 30 every year not the best skater but he's smart he's, he puts yeah, himself he's got in fucking 30 right now yeah i know but think last year was his positions. first off year in quite a while and then right Back this year, he's lighting it again. Yeah, exactly. Joe, Joe Pavelski is just quickly, he is the best at everything. He's the best golfer. Yeah, best I heard, thing, I heard best that. Best ping pong. He's the but guy he's who not wins the be- But everything. he's not the best skater, right? Exactly. But Great he, call, and he just scores. Yeah, and he's smart. A prime example for me, I watch him play uh, with the Coyotes, Step On. Like, Step On's not that fast. He like never was, yeah. He he's He's a very, very intelligent two-way hockey player who... Who you're like, ah, you know, he's not that fat. Every year, fi- over 50 points. Yeah, consistent, Every right? year. Yeah. And uh, to me, he's a, a perfect second-line center. I mean, yeah, just a, just a prime example of the mind over body. So in the summer then with OT, it's so different. Cause in the summer, you're going to be on the ice. I know. So summer, lot, like, right? summer, like, travel more. Yeah. W- which is fine. Like, yeah, you I need li- to you live some- in the summer, dude. I know, like- yeah. I'm here all the time, so it's not a big deal. Not a big deal. <laughs> um... Yeah, but the summer you travel around, but it's not like I'm going to like Moose Jaw to watch like a Western Hockey League game, and, like renting a car and driving like on some shit road. No, like I'm, I'm going to like Boston, New York, Toronto, Florida, out here. Like guys come skate out here all the time in the summer, so it's great. And and me and Oti get along good, and he's 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 classic. Yeah, I love how you said he's just like nonstop like chirping and stuff. Yeah, like he, he calls me, like comes up with a new drill. He's like, oh, I got to do this one. I'm like, relax. I just got out of yoga. Let me breathe for a second. <laughs> uh, Teddy, so you're doing a little bit of content work with LA Kings. Uh, I think today they played St. Louis, so that's when we're recording the interview. That was their 50th game of the season. They'd given up the first goal in hockey games, 43 of those 50 games. What is going on with LA <laughs> Kings? I didn't, I didn't know that. What's going on with them? I don't know, man. I feel bad just because I play. I don't care that I played there. Like, but I, just, I, know I love the guys. Yeah, exactly. I want the guys to win. Same with you. And, like, now you know how it is. We've all been on bad teams. Like, so many rumors. And, like, they don't want your buddies getting traded. Yeah. And all People that just stuff. start getting shriveled, dude. Because I know. The, the guys making money and your team stinks, you're going to just start getting ripped. Yeah, I, I, don't, I have no idea what's going on. No idea. Like I know their power play and PK stink, like but to give up the goal forty three times, the boys are snoozing. That means, that means like, and you know, it's not a, the biggest deal 
when you go down one nothing. But if it happens forty three or fifty games, yeah, you're, you're basically like, playing from behind every game. Yeah. Oh, so well, I, now, so now we need two minimum. Yeah, to win. and, the and they can't score. I saw the stat, and I'm like, okay, this has to be a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Like this isn't like you can't even try. Dude. I bet you an AHL team from the start of the year could score the first goal more than eight times in the first fifty games. I know. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. Did That's, you? Did but you they see? ended up winning against St. Louis. Oh, they did. Tough yeah, loss for St. Louis today. A hey, quickie. Boy uh, should have came out with this. Quick last moves <laughs> into fourth wing. Fourth. Um, uh, Jesus Christ. Let me start this one over. Quick moves into fourth and wins among U.S. born goalies. Kings top blues, so it was a four three. Imagine victory. if they didn't have Quickie too. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, that Peterson kid's pretty yeah, good. He's apparently, gonna be good, he's gonna be, be, yeah. He's but, a, he's but nonetheless, a, yeah. to have a or like a starter, yeah. Quickie's a great guy, huh? Yeah, he's awesome. He's like, just like the most like laid back dude. Like, yeah, so laid back. But you, but then bit. when you like you play with him in practice, like. You think because he's so laid back, but he never gives up on a puck either. Like even like in practice, he's like a competitive. Yeah, fucker. like the I rebounds coming, like in, the practice. rebound. You're like just gonna slide. Flurry's in, like that. Quick, he's like diving back. You're like, get out of here. Like let me score. I haven't scored in two it's, months. I let think, me score in practice. <laughs> it's a mentality. I, I'm not like no pucks are going in. Like I don't even care if they're shooting it from the side. Yeah. I don't care. I know. That's beautiful. What else do you want to talk about, Teddy? What else you got going in your life? You got a girlfriend? Yeah, I'm seeing someone. Ooh. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Private life. Yeah, I don't want to talk about private. We're talking about hockey and <laughs> living on the left Hey, did coast. you see the kid in, at the KHL All-Star Game singing? Yeah, I did. That I, was I, pimp I, move. I actually I worked out, used to work out with him in the, in the summer in Toronto. Oh, really? Yeah, he's a good kid. But like Luminaires, too, is like one of my favorite bands. I was like fired up watching did that. Did you know he could jam like hey, that? I didn't. Hey, so uh, my buddy Tyson Berry hangs out with that lead singer of the Luminaires. Really? I think he lives in Colorado. Yeah, they are. Uppy's a big Luminaires. Uppy's a big oh, Uppy, here, Uppy's walking down the stairs. Uppy's a big Luminaires Speaking fan, Speaking of good-looking cats. Seriously. I we're going to interview him next. Guy. People are going to be drooling for this one, but the, but the Teddy interview is probably going to drop first. Teddy, are, the, are, um, are the fans going to see Biz wrenching his We did something at Barstool, the headquarters, a while back. He had his shirt up to here and was scratching his chest hair the whole time. I'm like, I don't mind the chest hair, but he's going to like shake someone's hand. I don't hand care. With I just like having my hands in my pants. He's just oh, throwing himself it, around it, the room right it, now yeah. on the couch. It's just like a little comfort thing, especially during interviews. Like I feel homey. Have, have you and been buzzing on Rhea out here? I, no, I, I I haven't been doing much Rhea because we're working right now. Okay. Oh, oh we're working, really. <laughs> hey. We're working so hard. He had to stay off Rhea, Rhea, whatever it is. <laughs> No, but uh, his nose is touching me right yeah. now. We're eight feet away. <laughs> no, I'm. Uh, Raya is like a fun thing to like look at, but like it's tough to the wheel off of it. Really? Well, at least for me, anyway. <laughs> He's like Teddy's. Like, oh, you're the guy. Uh, I got square wheels. <laughs> you're the guy that struggles. Um. All right. Should Teddy. we wrap up? Yeah, we're yeah. gonna wrap up. Teddy, thanks for joining us. We're gonna have you on in like a month. Well, okay. Teddy's gonna be on the bus with us too. Oh yeah, that's right. We got yeah. a lot of shit to talk about. A little content going. Love it. Thanks, boys.